It's unrealistic to expect an archaeologist or historian to be able to explain the full history of every artifact they come across. On the occasion where they find themselves stuck for answers, these professionals sometimes turn to scientists for assistance. However, there are times when even the scientists aren't of any use. Everything you're about to see in this video is an archaeological mystery. We know that our ancient ancestors lived alongside woolly mammoths, and we also know that the bravest of our ancestors also hunted them for food. But we have no idea what process, hunt, or ritual created this incredible Ice Age relic in Russia. It's a 40-foot wide circle of mammoth bones, including skeletons, tusks, and full skulls and all of them were brought to this location deliberately to be arranged in this way. It's a monument of some kind, but we can only guess at its purpose. The site, known as Kostenki Boshevo, was created approximately 25,000 years ago, but was only discovered for the first time in 2014. The remains of at least 60 mammoths are present at the site, but experts are at a loss to explain what they're doing there. Their best guess so far is that the carcasses of captured mammoths were placed here in the permafrost to preserve the meat, like a gigantic freezer unit. That's plausible, but it doesn't explain why the hunter-gatherers would have taken such care as to lay them down in the formation of a two-foot-high ring. In 2016, Danish police were asked for their assistance in an attempt to solve a 1,000-year-old crime. The site of the crime is Borgring, the 10th century Viking fortress on the island of Zeeland. The history of Borgring is mysterious, but most historians believe it to have been built by King Harald Bluetooth somewhere around the year 980. Archaeologists have long noted that the large oak timbers that used to be part of the fort's enormous gates show signs of being charred by fire. There are also telltale signs of fire on both the outside and inside of what's left of the gateposts. It's the opinion of some archaeologists that Borgring was attacked by Danish noblemen, led by the king's son Swain, before it could be completed. After which it was abandoned without ever being used. The modern-day police were asked if they could send their fire investigation specialists to see if it's possible to determine precisely when and how the fire was started. Ideally, they'd like to be able to confirm that the fire was caused by an attack rather than an accident and thus validate the abandonment theory. Sadly, the police were unable to shed any light on the matter. The oldest foundry in Padua, Italy was discovered during the early 1990s, but wasn't excavated until April 2022. That's largely because it's underneath the headquarters of the Paduan police, so there are obvious issues with digging the site up. When experts were finally allowed access, they discovered evidence of earth and wood dwellings from 2,900 years ago. Most of the artifacts recovered from the foundry are fragments of ceramics from 2,800 years ago, all of which were deliberately arranged in a thick layer known as a wasp's nest. The function of the layer would have been to absorb moisture from the soil and thus prevent water from penetrating the foundry. It's possible to confirm the site as a foundry thanks to the presence of a piece of the casting matrix and pits used for metallurgical activities. Padua itself is around 3,000 years old, so it's likely that this was the first foundry ever built in the city and might date all the way back to its foundation. More digs are planned for the future, but all archeological activities have to be organized to suit the police's schedule. You know what a dagger is, and you know what an axe is, but have you ever heard of a dagger axe? Here's one to look at from the collection of the Met Museum in New York, USA. Dagger axes with ferrules like this one were the primary hand weapons of soldiers in the Chinese army more than 2,700 years ago. They only fell out of favor when they were replaced by the two-pronged halberd, better known as the ji, at the beginning of the Eastern Shao period. The dagger axes stuck around, but by the time the Western Han period began, they were seen as nothing more than ritual paraphernalia. When dagger axes are found by archaeologists, they generally turn up in pairs inside the tombs of princes. 
We are not sure why this is the case or why they are never found in singular form. What we can say with a reasonable degree of certainty is that the ancient Chinese stopped making these beautiful weapons, which were often grafted with gold or silver for decorative purposes during the early years of the first century. An enormous Hanseatic League ship was found close to the Estonian capital city of Tallinn in April 2022. This has always been an excellent place to look for old ships, as Tallinn port is one of Northern Europe's oldest and was once a vital trade center connecting Viking Scandinavia to Rurik Novgorod. It's clear that the coastline has changed a little since then, though, as the 700-year-old ship was found beneath the modern city's streets. The location was once the mouth of the Harjabea River, but the river no longer exists. The League ship is the largest shipwreck of its kind ever discovered, and would once have been a cog ship working between Russia, Estonia, and England as part of a trade network. The Hanseatic League controlled the lion's share of maritime trade in this part of Europe during the medieval era, and vessels like this one were the reason why. When the Danish king Valdemar VI tried to go to war with them and reclaim trade supremacy, the Hanseatic League humiliated him by forcing him to sign a peace treaty that gave the Danes even lower sea trade profits than they had before the war began. The entire ship will be removed and preserved, but the process could take years. There was a time when we thought we understood the so-called Nebraska Sky Disk. Experts were pretty sure that it was around 3,600 years old and depicted the sun, a crescent moon, and the stars that make up the Pleiades. As of September 2020, all those theories are out of the window. Two experts from Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany, have concluded that it's actually 1,000 years younger than has always been believed, and is therefore a relic of the Iron Age. Changing the age of the artifact means that the astronomical assumptions made about what it depicts must also now be considered obsolete. There are also new questions about where the artifact came from. It was discovered in 1999 in Saxony-Anhalt, Germany, but the copper used in its construction is from Austria, and the gold and bronze both come from Cornwall in England. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make it, using materials gathered from far and wide. But if we're wrong about its age by 1,000 years, then we have to accept that the stars on it are unlikely to represent the Pleiades. What might they represent instead? Unfortunately, we have no idea at the moment. Archaeologists from the University of Iowa made a stunning breakthrough in August 2011 when they discovered the remains of a 7,000-year-old village in Des Moines. Both the structures and the human remains buried in the ground here are the oldest ever found in the U.S. state. The field crew at the site nicknamed their discovery the Palace because of both its size and its excellent state of preservation. At the center of the village are four oval-shaped deposits that are thought to have been large houses, each of which covers an area of 800 square feet and features a hearth. Experts think the structures were likely made of wooden poles and then sealed with clay. More than 6,000 artifacts have since been recovered from the site of the village, and laser technology has been used to develop a 3D representation of the palace as it might have appeared when it was brand new. Two sets of human remains have been found at the site, each of which has been there for around 6,890 years. The bones were discovered covered in red ochre. The powdered mineral was used in ancient burials all over the world, but historians and scientists have never been able to say why. For many years, the mummified remains of the Gebelein Man in the early Egypt gallery of the British Museum was known by historians and archaeologists as one of the world's best preserved non-deliberate mummies. He was buried in a shallow grave in Gebelein, just south of Thebes about 5,500 years ago, wrapped in matting and linen, with no effort made to preserve his remains. Nevertheless, the hot sand and the sun preserved him anyway, much to the shock of the archaeologists who discovered him in 1896. 
His cause of death was unknown from then until 2013, when 3D imaging proved beyond all reasonable doubt that this unfortunate man was fatally stabbed in the back. The same scans also proved that he was young, probably no more than 20 years old when his life came to an end. Eager to find out more, the scientists at the museum subjected the mummy to infrared testing in 2018 and made another shocking discovery. Back when he was alive, his skin was covered in animal tattoos, making his the oldest figural tattoos ever discovered in the world. It might now be worth going back over the other mummies in the museum's collection with an infrared scanner to find out if they had ink of their own. For the past several years, the ruins of an ancient Roman town have been washing up on the shores of the Turkish port city of Amazra. The city, along with the entire Black Sea coast of Turkey, was once part of the Roman Empire, so the fact that Roman ruins would be found here isn't an enormous surprise. The mystery is why they've only just started showing up recently, and where they've been until now. Historians say that the ruins and debris come from a 3rd century Anatolian city called Amastris. Most of the washed up ruins are fragments of marble, but it's been possible to obtain dates from some of them thanks to references to Emperor Septimius Severus inscribed on some of the pieces. Septimius Severus reigned between the years 193 and 211. Roman historians noted that Amastris was a city of spectacular temples, so it's possible that the lumps of marble washed up on the shores of Amazra come from these temples. The best theory as to how they all ended up in the sea is that construction workers threw them away hundreds of years ago, because the people of the time didn't have an appreciation for history. When this next artifact was found during excavations in the ancient Danish market town of Ribe in February 2018, it was initially thought to be nothing more than an old comb. After it was cleaned up, though, it immediately became apparent that the 1,200-year-old comb was covered in runic inscriptions. The runes are significant because they come from the birth of the Viking written language. It's what they can teach us about the origins of Viking runes that's more important than the messages themselves, which are very basic. The artifact has the word comb written on one side and two comb written on the other. That might sound like an obvious thing to write on the side of a comb, but experts think that the marks might have been made by someone who was learning to write. They'd have started with the names of basic objects, and a comb was about as basic an object as they'd have owned. Their entire home might have been full of objects like this with their names etched into the surface. As the comb probably belonged to an everyday Viking, it's an indication that literacy was more widespread here than it was in most other parts of Europe at the time. A little over 1,700 years ago, a Roman ship sank in the Mediterranean, not far from what's now one of the busiest tourist beaches in Majorca. In March 2022, the ancient shipwreck started giving up its secrets after being found by archaeologists. The ship was a trading vessel and has been partially preserved by the sands of the Bay of Palma. Much of the cargo has also been preserved, and because of that, we know that the ship was laden heavy with amphorae full of oils, olives, wine, and garum sauce when it met with disaster. There's no sign that anyone attempted to evacuate any of the cargo before the ship went down, so it may have been at anchor in the bay when it was swallowed by the sea for reasons unknown. Archaeologists have named it the Ses Fontanalis Wreck. 300 clay jars have been recovered from the boat so far, along with other personal items like leather shoes, carpenter's drills, oil lamps, and cooking pots. Christian symbols are carved into the sides of some of the amphorae, even though the crew would likely have been pagan. So the wreck could be interpreted as an example of pagans and Christians living side by side. We're closing with a big one. It's the discovery of an entire ancient Egyptian city. This 3,000-year-old city, known as Aten, has been lost beneath the sands of Egypt close to Luxor for countless centuries before it was rediscovered in April 2021. When the discovery was confirmed, it was hailed as the most important in Egypt since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in the 1920s. 
archaeologists and historians have always known that Aten existed because it's referred to in so many ancient Egyptian documents. But they'd never previously been able to find it, despite decades of searching. Aten was built by order of the great pharaoh Amenhotep III during his rule between 1391 and 1353 BCE, and went on to be a seat of power for both Ai and Tutankhamun himself. Aside from the ruined buildings of Aten, archaeologists at the scene have recovered painted pottery, scarab beetle amulets, beautiful jewelry, and mud bricks stamped with the royal seal of Amenhotep. Excavations are ongoing at the site, but the latest buildings to be unearthed include the city's biggest residential area, a large bakery, and what appears to be an administrative district. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!